Hello you lovely people. Let's get mysterious with today's Ask Reddit question. People of Reddit, what is the best unexplained mysteries in criminal cases? Crazy Kirby 97 says. The Oakville Blobs. Basically, it started raining one day and citizens noted that the rain wasn't water, it was strange jelly blobs. It happened two times in the next three weeks, and mass sickness followed. Magnetic says. The disappearance of Brandon Swanson. Long story short, he was driving down a road in Minnesota in 2008 and came off into a ditch. He phoned his father to ask him to pick him up and told him where he was and his father said he would pick him up at a nearby town called Lyndon that Brandon should walk there and meet him. As his parents were on the way to pick him up, they were on the phone to him. They were unable to see him initially, so they asked him to flash his car's lights. Nothing. He said he could see the lights of a nearby town and would walk towards them. His father dropped his mother back at home and went back out to find him. At around 2 a.m., after around 47 minutes on the phone, Brandon yelled oh shit and the phone hung up. That was the last anyone ever heard from him. His car was found near Taunton, Minnesota, around 20 miles from where he said he was. His phone was never recovered. No trace of him has ever been found. No one knows what the lights he saw were, why he yelled oh shit, why he was 20 miles from where he said he was, where he went, or where he is. Pros and Han 69 says. Devil's Kettle. It's a waterfall in northern Minnesota where one half of the waterfall falls into a hole in the rocks and is never seen again. Local geologists have thrown stuff down there and nothing is ever seen again. When you consider two types of rocks in the area it's even more confusing. Tatsuko replies. Weirdly, here in Bulgaria there is a similar case called the Devil's Throat Cave, where a local river goes through some very dark cave system but it does flow out of the side of the mountain instead of just disappearing. There was an attempt to map out the cave some years ago where two geologists dove down the cave with scuba suits and oxygen tanks. Their bodies were washed up on the other side several days later. Pentaclops34 says, A secret organization that gives out a puzzle each year where winners get a place in the org. Bad Dream Incorporated replies, one theory I've heard is that it's a recruiting tool for the CIA or some other black ops agency. PM me for small talk says. A guy I knew was found dead in his apartment. The police said he was attacked and had been murdered. A few weeks later they say it was an error and it was suicide. He was dating this girl who was a daughter of the sheriff the next county over. They argued a lot and she would tell him things like. If you died no one would know who killed you, and other creepy stuff to scare him. She was a psychopath, and apparently would hit her previous ex-boyfriends, and possibly even him. He never would tell us though. He was not suicidal, and he died just a few days after breaking up with her after a big argument. I spoke to the police about him and his girlfriend's behavior, and they told me nothing could be done since the case was closed. Nan001 says. In France we have the Gregory affair. A mother goes get her 4 years old boy at the chilled minder. Once at home lets him play in the front yard. While she does some laundry 15 minutes later the boy is missing. Someone calls the boy's uncle. And tells him I have taken the boy. And says he lies dead in the river. The boy is found dead hands and feet tied at the bottom of the river nearby. The whole investigation is a total mess during which various members of the family are accused at some point, culminating with the boy's father killing one accused member of the family with a shotgun. The case was reopened last year because of additional information, then the man who was the judge at the time committed suicide. We still don't know who did it. October Twin says. Solved, but really creepy. I just watched a show about this woman that was kept in a coffin sized box for 23 hours a day for 7 years. She was brought out for an hour a day to be assaulted by a couple. The coffin was kept under a bed. She said it was like 100 degrees in the box. It was hard to breathe in the box. These people put her in the box, put it under a bed, 
shoved a bunch of crap around it, and then slept on the bed. 23 hours a day. In a wooden box. Under a bed. Colon open bracket. The guy actually took her home to visit her parents after a few years. They told the parents that they were engaged. Parents even took a photo of them. Then she went back to the box. The wife eventually helped her escape. The wife was jealous of her, thought the husband was in love with her. The fuzzy bunny one says. The Bobby Dunbar case. In 1912 a four-year-old disappeared while his family was camping. After a frantic eight-month search, a child matching his description was found one state over in the company of a traveling tinkerer. This little boy recognized Mr. and Mrs. Dunbar as his parents and seemed to know details of Bobby Dunbar's life. The tinkerer insisted that the child was actually Bruce Anderson, whose mother, a single, illiterate, poor servant, had given him custody because she couldn't afford to raise Bruce. Julia Anderson traveled to Louisiana to support his story and identified the little boy as Bruce. However, the courts believed the Dunbars instead and convicted the tinkerer of kidnapping. He later won an appeal, but the Dunbars retained custody of Bobby. Ninety years later, Bobby's granddaughter was doing a genealogy project and discovered the old controversy. She had her father and her uncle, son of the younger subset brother, take a DNA test. The test proved that Bobby Dunbar was not related to the Dunbar family. He was Bruce Anderson all along. So, what happened to Bobby? Rick Tarr replies. That's awfully similar to Walter Collins and the Wineville chicken coop murders. Boy goes missing. Police return a boy to mother. Mother insists the boy isn't her son. Police don't listen. But it turns out mom is right and it's not her kid. I wonder if this happened more often than we are aware. Back before DNA evidence and photographs proliferated. Lestick says. The disappearance of Agatha Christie. One of the great, if not the greatest mystery writers of all time. And one day, for no reason, she vanished without a trace. And then she was found 10 days later, suffering from amnesia, but registered at a hotel under the name of her husband's mistress. No explanation has ever been offered by Agatha. RPLH says. I haven't seen mention of this. The disappearance of Pennsylvania District Attorney Ray Gricker in 2005. Gricker had previously investigated sexual misconduct charges against Penn State football assistant coach Jerry Sandusky in 1998. Gricker didn't have enough evidence at the time to press formal charges and dropped the case. In 2005 he went missing and his car was discovered in the parking lot of a roadside business north of State College, Pennsylvania. His laptop was found in a nearby stream with the hard drive removed. In 2011 after a lengthy grand jury investigation, Sandusky was finally charged with sexual abuse of a minor. Gricker's body was never found, and officials deny any connection of the Sandusky Penn State abuse scandal with Gricker's disappearance. Lady DD says. The lead mask's case is very weird. On the afternoon of August 20, 1966, a young man was flying a kite on the Moro do Vintame, Vintame Hill, in Neteroe, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, when he came upon the bodies of two deceased males and reported them to the authorities. The Moro do Vintame had difficult terrain, and the police were unable to reach the bodies until the next day. When a small team of police and firefighters arrived on scene, they noted the body's odd conditions. The two males were lying next to each other, slightly covered by grass. Each wore a formal suit, a lead eye mask, and a waterproof coat. There were no signs of trauma, and no evidence of a struggle in the surrounding area. Next to the bodies, police found an empty water bottle and a packet containing two wet towels. A small notebook was also identified, in which were written the cryptic instructions. During their last day alive the two men bought a bottle of water from the bar and kept the receipt so they could return it later. So they expected to survive whatever they were about to do. 
most plausible theory I've heard is that the men were hippie spiritualists who believed they could communicate to aliens or spirits using psychedelics and they must have died of a drug overdose. But what psychedelics cause drug overdoses with no signs of a struggle, and what's with the masks and raincoats? Just weirdness. A junkie says. The Valentich disappearance. In the 1970s a man flying a light plane flying over water from Melbourne, Australia to Tasmania, claimed to air traffic that he was being followed. About 20 minutes into the conversation he claims it wasn't an aircraft, that the only sound is a metallic sound. Him and the aircraft is still missing, and if you type UFO with Valentich appearance is a pic of a UFO taken around the same time in a Melbourne beach. Garlic after shave replies. He was a known UFO enthusiast, and his radio traffic as he reported the sighting was very similar to a scene in a certain Spielberg movie which had come out recently. Very likely he lost his orientation and flew into the sea as he was making his hoax report. Sheer Cold 24 says. The Elian Moore Lighthouse Mystery. On December 26, 1900 a supply ship arrived at the Elian Moore Lighthouse to find that no one was at the dock waiting for them. The island's only inhabitants were the lighthouse keepers James Duckett, Thomas Marshall, and William MacArthur. Captain James Harvey was in charge of the supply ship and had brought along Joseph Moore, a replacement lighthouse keeper. After attempts at getting the lighthouse keepers using the ship's horn and a flare, Joseph decided to go up to the lighthouse to check things out. When he reached the lighthouse, he immediately knew something was wrong because the door was unlocked and two of the three coats were missing in the entrance hall. As he reached the kitchen, he noticed a half-eaten meal and an overturned chair, as if someone had left in a hurry. After searching the lighthouse top to bottom Joseph hadn't found signs of the lighthouse keepers. A further investigation was made and found mysterious entries in the lighthouse log. December 12th Thomas Marshall noted of severe winds the likes of which I have never seen before in 20 years. He also noted that James Duckett, the principal keeper, had been very quiet and that William MacArthur had been crying. The strange thing is that on the mainland MacArthur had been known as a tough guy and was a seasoned mariner. December 13th noted that the storm was still raging on and that the three men had been praying. It's strange because all three of the men were seasoned mariners and situated about 150 feet, 45.72 meters, above sea level. They should have known they'd be safe, so why would they be praying for the storm to pass over? The final log entry on December 15th read, storm ended, sea calm, God is over all. Stranger is that there were no reported storms in the area on the 12th, 13th, and 14th of December. In fact, the weather in that area had been reported as calm. The most accepted theory is that the men were swept into the sea and drowned. However, questions arose about why the bodies had never washed up on shore as well as some others. Mr. Shoggoth says. Personal favorite is the Permian extinction, because until recently there hasn't been any conclusive evidence as to what could cause a die-off of species so massive it takes well into the next geological era. We are talking on a scale of millions of years to fully recover from it. Paleontologists call it the great dying, and if you know anything about those guys, they're not usually ones for hyperbole. Queen Lady Gaga says. In 2001, they found a woman's body in a little wooded area in the parking of Law Petal Royal Victoria in Montreal. They called her Madam Victoria and have never found anything about who she was. They did facial reconstruction, a popular TV show, made a sort of documentary about everything they knew to try and find her, but still nothing. How does someone go die in a parking in the middle of a city, and not a single person knows who she is? Shitlordius Prime says. I haven't seen this mentioned yet, but Ricky McCormick, a man who reportedly could barely write his own name was found dead, with notes in his pocket resembling a code. Cryptologists have been trying to decipher the code for several years. 
the FBI eventually released the notes to the public asking for assistance in the hopes someone might recognize the code or be able to crack it. Some have speculated that it's about drugs, some that it's his medication list, and many presume it's nothing more than gibberish. It still raises the question, who killed Ricky? What do the notes contain, if anything at all? Why do people tend to die with mysterious ciphers in their pockets? I've often thought about this case and looked over the notes several times. There are repeating letters such as GFRNE, WLD, and PRSE that lead me to believe that there really is a message in them. Studio Line by L'Oreal says. Stonehenge. Even with today's technology, we can't say for sure how, why or who built it. For something over 5,000 years old to hold on to its exact meaning after all this time makes it one of the great unexplained mysteries. Smash Engine 10 chimes in. How the hell monkeys got to South America? The current hypothesis is that they rode on a raft made of dead plants across the Atlantic Ocean and then managed to establish a successful population.